We have Brandon Phillips from CoreOS. You have to do a dance before you sit down, uh, Brandon, to entertain the crowd. We have Jonathan Bull uh, from CoreOS. We have Ken Robertson from AppSera. Vincent Bat from Red Hat. Are you here, Vincent? Cool, so here's Vincent, he's on his way here. So we'll have a list of questions that we're going to ask the panelists here, and we'll be taking questions from the audience as well. So we're gonna talk about the app container specification, app C for short. Uh, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna be talking to some of the maintainers and some people that have built around the spec. Um, thank you, Vincent. All right, so. I think what we need to do is start with the overview, and I think Jonathan Bull, who's the um, kind of project lead on app container spec, kind of give us an overview of app container spec and why we built it. Uh, all right, so starting at the beginning, um, you know, at CoreOS, we believe like very firmly that you know, containers are sort of the future paradigm of how applications are gonna be deployed. Um, we also believe very strongly in like using small reusable components, like the Unix philosophy. Uh, and containers is one area where we felt the industry was sort of lacking this common definition around what a container is, so that uh, coming up with the standard is important so that we can have this thing that's very well defined so that people can build a variety of tools to, to work with them, to you know, create images, to ingest images, to run images, transport them, all that kind of stuff and then to come up with a consistent uh, expectation of what it means to run a container. Uh, so at a high level, uh, the, the container spec defines a few things. The first that most people sort of think of as synonymous, synonymous with the spec is the image format. Uh, so that's you know, what bits go into a container, what bits go down on disk, um, some metadata associated with that, labels and things like that. Uh, the next sec section that, that um, the thing we're trying to solve is around distribution. So for that, we have this idea of discovery, how you can discovery, uh, discover container images. Uh, for that, <clears throat> we really want to decentralize the process. We don't want there to be just like a centralized repository for, for you know, all app container images. So we have this system around um, discovering, uh, using the federated DNS namespace to be able to discover images that other people can host. So everyone can just put up an HTTP server, host their own images, and other people can, can retrieve and discover them using like a well-known mapping from an image name to, to where to find the bits. Uh, yeah, the next area of the spec is around sort of um, how we, once you take those images, what does it mean to, to talk about them as like an executable unit? And so that we have the idea of pods, which is essentially a grouping of one or more images, and then a whole bunch of uh, you know, uh, execution parameters. So uh, things like isolators, like what constraints you want to apply, uh, things like, um, uh, let's see, blanking here on what else we can do with pods right now. Networking, thank you, <laughs> um, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then f the last section is sort of the execution environment. So what does it mean to actually like run a pod? What does the life cycle look like? Um, what uh, the, the sort of a subcomponent to the ex execution environment is this idea of a identity metadata service, um, which is we're trying to promote as, as, as a means to really push the notion of identity like down from sort of the VM level to like the container level so that every con application, uh, ev every pod has like a first class identity so that when they're communicating with other pods across the network, they can sort of you know, verify each other's identity um, through this central trusted service. Um, and also that provides a, a, a well-known means to, to serve metadata to applications that are running in pods so that applications that are running in a pod can sort of discover uh, introspect information about what, the, what they're running in. Cool, so thanks for that overview. So given that, you know, we, we understand the importance of AppC, and there's so many container uh, projects that you guys could be contributing to. So why are you guys working on the spec? And we'll start at the end with uh, Charles. Kind of give us a, a good reason why you're participating. So um, the original reason why I got involved was that uh, we were looking for something that would be very composable, so we could break it down into small pieces. and. Um, in looking at sort of the existing off-the-shelf um, stuff that we could use, uh, they were very like tightly integrated, small packages, and so uh, we wanted to get involved in something where we could sort of, well, we like this piece, we'll take this piece, we'll like we like this piece, we'll take this piece, and yet still be able to mesh that with um, you know uh, others in the community and. You know, so that was kind of the original reason. Um, the, the 
the idea that we could make something that would be a little bit more composable and we don't have to like take something wholesale. Um. Ken? Uh, so at Absera, we've been working on our container technology for almost three years as well, but it was closed source. And we were starting to look at how we could move it out to its own project, but not kind of spin off something else. And that was around the same time AppC was coming out. And a lot of the things the project was focusing on was the things that were very important to us. So it was kind of a chance to get involved with something that's maturing and also to help iterate on those things, things like package distribution, discovery, um, signing and encryption, all of those things were core to our platform. And we're looking at, as we open source this piece, how can we have it conform with something rather than just creating more noise? So coming from the Google background, um, I'm interested in uh, building the cathedral. But before you build the cathedral, you've got to pour the foundation. I think that something like AppC is really uh, foundational to the whole ecosystem. Uh, and so if you don't have a solid spec and a solid understanding of what you can expect uh, inside and outside of a container, uh, the whole cathedral is going to fall down. Uh, why, why to get in? OK. Yeah, here we go. Um, so why, why to get involved? Honestly, it's, it, I mean, Red Hat's a well-known platform, and it's been in the, the Linux space for 20 years now. Um, and there really, containers are no doubt a, a, a forward progression. Um, and everybody's, there's so many use cases to be solved for. And uh, like, like it's been said, containers have been around for a long time. Uh, there's been ways to do it yourself. There's been tools to do it. And the standard has just been, well, that's the way that this tool worked, or that's the way that this pattern worked. And the more that we, you know, anybody can contribute their past experience to help all those things work together, I think the less that we'll see any kind of uh, split in the environment, because we've seen that pattern as well, where certain people think it should be this way, certain people think it should be another way, and it causes a big split for communities, it causes a big split for businesses that are looking to invest and, you know, like heavily invest in how they do things. And if that split gets too dangerous, then it, it's bad for everybody. So honestly, the biggest importance to contribute is to help everything stay homogenous and good for everybody. So I have a list of questions here, but I think I'm going to just like freestyle a little bit. So, <laughs> so I have like questions of my own too, like when working at Core OS, I was like, hey, we're gonna do this app spec thing. So I think the big well in the room is, why not just use the most popular uh, container tool that's in use today? And uh, you know, just call that the spec and start from there. Like, why start from scratch and build something from the ground up? Sure. Yeah, you, CTO yeah. of CoreOS. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Seems reasonable. Um, <laughs> so there are a few things. The, the, the first one was um, we wanted to get some of the security things right, so around signing and, and image distribution and having a, an image ID that was a first-class cryptographic hash of the actual contents of this. Um, these are kind of things that have been standard inside of Unix package managers. And in a lot of ways, you can think of um, the app container as sort of you know, Linux package management uh, in a new way, like 2.0 to use that. Um, but th so, so that, that was one piece. The, the other piece um, was around doing DNS federation. And so DNS and um, TLS, uh, I don't think anyone in here would raise their hands and say are perfect systems. Uh, who, who thinks DNS and TLS and SSL is perfect system? <laughs> All right, but uh, they're they're well they're well understood and they're systems that we have in place and that fit into our existing trust models um, that we we understand in our in our systems today. And so we wanted to heavily leverage those things um, because they are so fundamental and they they fit into the tools that we already have. Um, and so that was another piece. And then I think the last piece was we wanted to just use the simplest off-the-shelf things that we could so that somebody can take you know, a regular HTTP server, um, they can put in some metadata, run an indexer like you would over your dev packages or RPM packages and slap it up on a mirror. You can globally distribute that mirror and not really have any state in that repository. Um, so those were some of the primary motivators around actually writing down the spec. Um, and then the last piece is, you know, you have to just write down the spec <laughs> um, in order for people to figure out whether they agree or not. Um, having code is, is great, 
it's a, a, it's a place to start, um, but you need to just, it, it's easier to argue about specifications um, than specifications and code at the same time. Um, so those are some of the motivations. So I'll, I'll pose the same question to some of the people that had to implement the spec, right? Like, you, you know, we have this kind of pseudo standard going on, and then you see this announcement from CoreOS, hey, there's this app container spec, kind of give me like your initial reactions on that, and then, you know, over that same period of time, how the spec has matured, and have we kind of lived up to the promise of the spec? Start with Tim. Right, so the, uh, so I'm, I'm part of the Kubernetes project. Um, the first thing that, maybe not the first thing, one of the first things that crossed my mind when we saw the, the rocket announcement uh, was, well, well, damn, now I have to add a proper abstraction. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got, you've got one instance of something and you, you build to it, right? Um, and you can't really build an abstraction until you've got two or three instances that you can sort of find common purpose with. Um, so rocket is really forcing us, um, in, in the best possible sense, to define an abstraction uh, in the Kubernetes system that divorces us from the details of the particular container implementation, which is then a, a divorce from the particular OS. Um, so I think it's a really good thing in terms of clean principled layering. And for a lot of people that don't know, Rocket was the first implementation of the app application container spec. So one thing we wanted to do was be careful, you know, not to draw a spec up without an actual implementation to actually drive the spec. So just for those that hear Rocket in this AppC panel, uh, that's what it is. Uh, Ken. One of the first things that really stood out on the standard was just the fact that I could email someone an ACI file and have it entirely self-contained. Um, you know, that's everything that allows point-to-point -point sharing rather than trusting a third party or transmitting them something that then um, might be slightly different if it's just running commands. That was one of the first things that really helped stand out to us is like, ooh, that's like in line with the distribution model we want. I guarantee you someone's right now like startup idea, emailing containers. <laughs> like you did it. <laughs> they owe you. Uh, Charles. So uh, similarly, we uh, looked at it and thought that um, based on, I guess kind of going back to the, the, the question just before this, we already had a fair amount of existing infrastructure. And so um, taking something off the shelf is, for us, additive infrastructure. So that's like an increased operational cost. So we wanted something that we could, you know, take the, the pieces we wanted and integrate that into existing infrastructure. Um, and specifically with the uh, container image, that was um, something we had sort of, you know, it was like every six months we would sort of uh, look over our requirements, think about what we want, and um, when this showed up, it was like, well, this is more or less what we've been thinking about already. Um, and if we go with it, then we'll be able to interoperate with all this, all the other parts of the, you know, other components that are listed in the spec, as well as uh, you'll be able to pull things uh, uh, from others on the internet. So. That's it. Uh, I, I, <clears throat> again, I, I feel like there, it's it's not particularly a choice uh, it, it, because choosing implies that you've left something else behind uh, and in, to a large extent not everything is mutually exclusive so by, by helping further and draw out exactly those use cases and, and there are so many use cases on the table uh, trying to find the one way that solves everything that you're doing it can be sometimes self-defeating and building the primitives so that you allow yourself the freedom to, to solve this use case, solve that use case. And like Tim said, once you start having more choices, because, I mean, there's still LXC, there's still LXC libvert, there's, there's still things that are in active development that might have been dwarfed in hype by all kinds of things, but uh, there's still active development and finding all those commonalities and how to, how to work with them uh, is gonna, hopefully, if, as long as, you, you do work on the spec, you do work on the basics, you do work on the, the generic commonalities, it should draw every, drive everything else forward together. That, that is not in the spec at all, that's, that's just noise. Um, so one thing I wanted to know, like the, the people that kind of kicked off the spec initially, what kind of things that you believe that don't belong in the spec? Right, like we could cover a lot of things when it comes to application container specification, but what things do you want to see not get specified or should be left to implementers to add value? That'll be a question for you, John. I see you, see you thinking. 
Uh, I might equivocate on that one a little bit. One thing that we initially avoided was um, defining some kind of like repository uh, definition. So you know, we stuck with, as Brendan said, we wanted to emphasize that people could you know distribute images using really simple simple setups, so they could just throw up an HTTP server and then suddenly they're serving images, um, which is great for many cases, but um, you know, we're starting to think maybe that only gets you so far. And, and sort of the next thing that we might have to do, uh, start thinking about is um, providing some kind of index, for example, for images um, so that people can do more sophisticated sort of queries and, and discover images. Um, yeah, essentially provide a, a means to discover them beyond just, um, beyond just having people, you know, maintaining their own lists or, or whatever of how to find images. Tell them that AppC is almost 1.0. <laughs> we'll be there soon. Um, so uh, challenges implementing the spec, right? So one thing about a spec, you, you have some assumptions going in, right? You look at the spec, you get all hyped about it. Normally, a good spec will kind of lead you into an obvious direction uh, as far as implementation goes. Uh, for those that had to use the spec to implement something or integrate with the spec, um, kind of what have been the challenges there? Like, it can't just be all awesome sauce. Like, what's the other side of the, of the coin? In some areas, the spec is still maturing. So as we're looking at porting what we already have, there's some questions about you know, which route do we go here. We can start con to de help define the spec um, by giving our opinion, but we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves in implementation versus discussing. Um, so usually we're kind of just maintaining a balance there um, and involving others on the team for kind of a discussion, talking with Jonathan as well, and, and you know, kicking off some of the discussion. So it can be kind of like, a reference that we might have, but also not kind of saying this is necessarily the way it should be, per se. I guess for the benefit of the audience, what are those things that are kind of left ambiguous? Um, I mean, lately we've been talking a lot about the uh, metadata service um, and how identity can work with that, giving containers identity, um, encryption of, of the ACI images, um, and how that could work around with um, the DNS discovery, like how do you know what keys to trust and, and deal with key management. Tim? So I'm working from um, a system that has an established um, sort of user base that we're, we're maybe a little bit ahead of you guys on that curve um, and trying to get the, the implementation of, of Rocket specifically, but Rocket as an implementation of AppC. Um, finding the places where we've done something that is sort of counter to the spec um, and then trying to figure out, well, what the heck do we do with this, right? How do we, how do we adapt? Um, what's the abstraction that we can provide that wraps, you know, that other container system that's really popular um, and, and provides a layer that works here? Um, that, that's, I mean, the tricky part. Remembering, too, that the spec is at an 0.5 something level, which means there's a lot of sort of vague words in there that aren't very clear, that aren't prescriptive enough. Um, there are um, internal inconsistencies. You know, most of them are minor, uh, but, they, but they exist, right? And so as you try to implement the spec, you find these things and you say, well, mm, that's interesting. What did we actually mean here? And then you, you kick off a week-long debate, so. So as an employee at CoreOS, I'm watching the Rocket team attempt to build Rocket, and there's like these pivots in a pull request where the spec doesn't define specific behavior. How important has it been to kind of hold up on those changes to Rocket itself before kind of getting consensus around the spec? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely been a blocker for some of the stuff with Rocket. Um, so, so one ex recent example would be defining um, how to run images as you know, non-root users. We found that, that we're actually sort of stuck implementing that in Rocket because the spec hadn't, didn't have a clear definition of what it means to specify you know, users at which, as which images run. Um, so fortunately, with, you know, with Rocket, we've had you know, so much to work on that it's never really blocked us from development continuing. Um, but often we just sort of hit these areas where we're like, okay, we need to kick this up to this, you know, the right thing to do here. There's a few routes we could go with the implementation, um, but we really want to figure out what the right thing to do is for the, like, the generic case. So we need to discuss this with, with the spec, with other users, other implement implementers to see what we should, what we should do. Yeah, I, I mean, in general, we, we do just pause development um, because at the end of the day, we want the, the success of the spec um, because uh, as we've seen with things like you know, package managers, having a lot of tooling that, that builds the actual package and takes these binary assets and gets them into a, a format that um, can be installed onto machines is, is rather important. So uh, we've kind of lost the entire game if, <laughs> if we go off into our own 
uh, into our own world um, with Rocket before getting the spec uh, fully fleshed out. I just want to add that you know a good spec codifies existing um, an existing either proof of concept or some basic implementation. And if you write a spec without an implementation that goes with it, then you're going to you're going to write a spec that you can't implement, right? So you have to implement along the way, and that means I think you, you have to pause. So you brought up something interesting around building, like how do you build an ACI image, right? So a lot of people will read the spec and notice that how do you produce one of these? Um, you know, there's some popular tools that do have an opinion on how you build an image. Um, that seems to be left out in a, in a way in this best. Can you guys kind of talk to that? Yeah, I guess that's one distinguishing factor about the spec. We didn't want to be prescriptive about how images um, are necessarily built. Um, we didn't want to just provide one workflow of this is, you know, you run these steps and now, now this is an image. Um, as Brandon said, we have an emphasis on using existing standards like, like gzip and, and tar and stuff like that. It's all very well supported in the community, very composable. Um, but we were sort of coming out from the perspective that uh, a lot of environments already have their existing workflows around how they build, you know, how they turn their code into into bytes to be into binaries to be run, um, and that we just <coughs> excuse me that uh, it would be quite straightforward to kind of go from that to a uh, sort of using native 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 build systems to to output uh, app container images. Um, do you want to talk more about that? So without that specification, how are people building ACIs today? Like, what are, what are people doing? Yeah, I mean, that's by far the weakest point um, today, is that the, it is difficult to get an ACI built. Um, but there's a lot of places that we can lean on. Um, for example, we have built a tool called Go ACI. Um, and this is using the ability of Go to, um, to do a completely static compilation of a Go binary without depending on libc. So you can very trivially turn that into an ACI, because there's only one file. Um, but we've also been building tools, for example, to take uh, uh, Java applications and convert those into ACIs, uh, since Java has a fairly well-defined package system. Um, and you can imagine, you know, leaning on other other packaging systems that exist in other environments. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity for, um, I think, what a lot of people do um, already today with things like. Uh, like Heroku has their slug system. I think there's a similar set of opportunities around how do I integrate, um, not not prescribe the build system, but integrate with existing um, existing packaging and build systems in Python and Ruby and these other language infrastructures. So. I mean, even in the AppSera system, we already had um, a way to just give a script that could generate something, and we use that just for compiling runtime. So we could actually reuse that because an ACI image is really just a tarball with a JSON file and a directory. So we copy stuff in, tar it up, and we were good. Uh, I guess the things you would like to change about the spec, right? So the spec does have tons of details on it. So if you go check out the spec, you know, it talks about a lot of things in fine granularity where you can just read that thing and kind of get a good head start on how you would implement it. What's specified there that you would like to probably see, like maybe change, maybe need some more discussion around it? Given that I submitted about 45 issues last night, <laughs> um, sorry for that. Um, I think m my my biggest issue with the spec as it stands is that it, I don't think it goes far enough in terms of defining um, the experience that an application gets running inside a container. Um, today, with the various container systems, the, there's sort of an open assumption that whatever kernel you're running on is what you're going to get. All syscalls are fair game. Um, permissions and security is sort of, you know, whatever. Um, and it's just not specified. Um, and I think that in order to facilitate sort of bigger uh, installations to, to get more clever um, management systems and higher level uh, stacks, that we're going to need to tighten that down. We're going to need to make it very clear what's, what's in scope and what's not. Right? And that might include, like, syscall X is not available when you're inside a container, right? I'm just hypothetically. Um, so, uh, one of the issues that I've been thinking about for a little while is that uh, the way the spec discusses uh, discovery and fetching of images is a little uh, prescriptive at the moment. Um, there are basically two, two mechanisms as it exists now that are very well thought out, but they might not be applicable or uh, even allowed in some infrastructures. Like, you might not want to make a 
network round trip out to the internet or something like that. And so one of the things I would like to see is um, the language around discovery being modified so that you don't have to do this thing to find an image, and if that doesn't work, then you find this. But um, specify how you could write your own strategies and then plug those in and you know, you, maybe you just have one strategy or you have five that cascade in some particular order. Um, so that's sort of one of my pet, pet projects. One thing we want to see improving is around some of the, I think is the ACE validator or basically um, getting a richer testing suite to use against an execution environment to understand how compliant it is. Because when building it, it's kind of what areas are we, do we have a gap in um, and what areas do we, do we need to improve? And it may also be use, useful to users in terms of if they have an ACI, understanding how a platform might slightly differentiate because you don't want all implementations to be the same. You want to allow for, for diversification, but um, understanding would mine be compatible as long as you know, maybe this slight piece deviates that I don't depend on. So for the benefit of, I guess, the people listening to the panel, what, what is the validation tools and why are, why are they here? Right, so within the, within the uh, app container spec repo, we have the actual English language definition of the specification, um, which gets you not very far because English can't run on a computer. Um, and it's very uh, ambiguous even for five people to, to agree on the meaning of words. Um, so we have also, along with each pull request, uh, actual code that um, will get packaged up into an ACI every time we release the spec. And that, that, AC, that, that ACI is the, the execution validator. And the idea is that if you've implemented the, the spec correctly, you run this validator and it says OK at the end of it. Um, and a place that we can definitely do better is instead of saying OK, it says uh, you got three out of five. <laughs> um, and so th these sorts of things are, are things that we can improve on. But the basic idea there is that you know, we test the spec by having a unit test that runs inside of the execution environment. Cool. So I'm going to ask one more question before we open up to the audience to kind of get their, their questions that they would like the panel to ask. Um, if we for, fast forward a year from now, what will success look like for the application container spec? And we'll just go down the line. Okay. I'll start. Um, I think success looks like... Uh, a lot of build tools that make it easy for developers to take their uh, the thing on their laptop and, and deploy it onto onto a Linux machine, or or any machine, because uh, <clears throat> even even though they've they, there are uh, implementations of the app C that were on BSD, so so some of the some of the vocabulary, even like the syscalls, that's all going to be tough, but uh, it should stay generic enough. But um, honestly, it, uh, I I feel like there will likely be a space, like you said, the go to ACI, that there will be just as much uh, uh, vocabulary and arrangement for, like, you know, how do, how, do you build, how do you build an ACI? I mean, there's always, like, GNU make things and all these other stuff to, like, just make install to this duster, and you've got something that could be almost runnable with a few other pieces. Um, but with the ACI or the application container spec, if there's tooling around that that companies and workflows could expect and they say, well, in this environment we run, you know, X and Y and Z, it might not actually be so much the, uh, the, the success might not be actually in the tools that implement it. That'll be great and that'll solve specific use cases. But as people develop to say, we need it in this arrangement or we need it with this strictness or we need it with this network topology and they have, you know, their own tooling because God knows everybody will make their own tooling despite what's out there. Um, just implement that, you know, go to the ACI and then have other tooling that will be like ACI to this, ACI to that. Um, and it, I, I feel like for a lot of people it'll be a, uh, a much less risk for them because they say, well, we, we got it to this point and if we needed to get it from ACI to this runtime or to this cluster or to this whatever, uh, that's just the last leg of it. And um, having something, some kind of a spec that you landed it here and then for this platform it needs to be in another format, that's just the last leg, but everybody has a common ground. John. Uh, yeah, I think that successes would be, you know, if, if developers, when they're just a year from now, they're building their code, it's just a very obvious choice that, yeah, ACI is going to be one of the output formats. Um, 
as the result of their you know, CI process or whatever, and then they know that this is something that they can run, they can choose to run on these bunch of different runtimes like Rocket or in Kubernetes or in uh, Kerma or Nosecone. Um, for me, that would be success. I think at this point in the game, even you know, plus one year, uh, success is not dominance or ubiquity. Success is having shifted the conversation, um, making sure that when people talk about containers, they don't talk about, well, this is what you know, this one container spec implements. It's what, this is what the specification says. This is where the specification is going. This is a, you know, being a community-driven thing, being um, at the table for all of these sort of conversations with the rest of the industry. I mean, this is what they're doing, right? We're changing the industry. I think a year from now, it would be really great to have more about um, community awareness and adoption to where whenever anyone's releasing a new version of their product, they um, create a Docker Hub image and they also want to create an ACI and put it up for discovery. Um, last night, Vincent made a comment to me that uh, kind of got stuck in my craw and I actually think that um, the point he's making was that, well, I'm going to extrapolate from his point. So I think in six months or a year, what would be sort of uh, um, kind of a great success was, would be that since you have a well-defined spec, what you really do first and foremost is you generate a, a, an app container image, and then from that you can uh, translate that into other formats that you might already have for legacy reasons or um, uh, you know, just because you want to run it on this other, you know, very well-known container uh, system, or you know, uh, ship things to AWS. Or you whatever. can say Docker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the one that break the break the. I already uh, did. Oh, you did you? Okay. <laughs> no, you broke it. That was, that was you. Yeah. That's fine. All right. <laughs> cool. So, I'm pretty sure you guys have questions. So what we'll do is uh, we'll get some mics out, and then we'll ask our, our panelists some questions. So. Any questions for our panelists? Okay, so we'll start over here, and then we'll make our way around. Is there any other mics, or maybe I'll jack one of these mics and go this way? You want to come on stage to ask your question? No. Oh, I was just playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in the panel's view of, of System D, and it seems like it's been fairly hands-off so far with respect to the APC spec and even the rocket implementation. Do you view that there's some synergy there, or are you going to continue to be hands-off, or what are your comments? So before you guys answer that, he said system D. And I'm looking for all the sysadmins in here. It's like kryptonite for sysadmins. Like, embrace system D. It's awesome. I guess I'll start. Um, yeah, I mean, at CoreOS, we're big fans of system D. Um, we're very opinionated. And in Rocket, um, you know, we're designing Rocket to be modular, but the, so, so it sort of has a staged approach, and so people can swap out different stages, but sort of the default execution environment stage that we provide um, is heavily oriented around systemd. It uses systemd, essentially spins up a lightweight systemd instance to manage the application lifecycle. Uh, so for us, it integrates very nicely with um, a lot of the concepts in systemd map pretty well to things uh, that we're trying to define in the spec, but we're definitely not using systemd like, as a starting point for what we're defining in the spec. It just happens to mesh pretty well with, with what, we're, what we're doing. So the, the Kubernetes project in particular is uh, sort of agnostic to what you're running underneath. Um, so if, if Rocket runs with systemd, um, that we're perfectly happy with that. Um, you know, internal to Google, we don't use systemd, uh, maybe comma yet. Um, systemd seems to be growing itself into you know, yet another container format. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll support that directly at some point. Um, you know, we're agnostic to that. We're, we're, we're aiming at a higher level. Uh, th th that question came came up a lot, and especially when the AppC was first announced. I mean, because CoreOS is so intertwined with Systemd. I mean, there's a good relationship there, um, and there was some some verbiage in there. And it, but it's 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 largely optional. I mean, like the most the first point that most people came up with is socket activation, but it's not a requirement because that's not a lot of things that different platforms can do. Um, but it, the, like, like it said, the, the stage one uh, part of the application container spec that actually stands up an inspawn instance, uh, systemd, it, 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 it's already done containers for a long time with inspawn. Uh, 
um, AppC or Rocket rather is, is leaning on that piece of it and has done a good job packaging it up in a very lightweight stage one. Uh, you could have another one. So uh, I think that just goes back to keeping the, the spec generic enough to where anything could do. You could write your own new utility to be that stage one. Um, but it's, it, it, it pairs nicely with system D because system D does do a lot of the, that solves a lot of the use cases that it's looking to work together with. Cool. Got a question here. Uh, yeah. Microphone's coming. Uh, great talk, guys. I really enjoyed it. Um, so uh, the existing or historical efforts at containerization have uh, had a, a pretty poor record with establishing a good way to isolate containers from you know, both their host environment and you know, other containers. Uh, and you know, efforts like SysMD and Spawn have kind of rested their hopes on, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you know, using capabilities to address a lot of these issues. Uh, and I'd particularly like to hear from the gentleman in the center from the Kubernetes project uh, on, about uh, you know, advancing uh, container isolation beyond just you know, the use of capabilities um, to maybe you know, restriction of uh, system calls, as he said. And, and kind of as an extension to that question, you know, do you anticipate AppC turning into its own like, uh, application binary interface or ABI for uh, a containerized environment? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a good point. And I think that's, that's why some of the vagueness that will get uh, teased out further, but around the isolators is going to be very, very important. But it's largely, it's not going to become like an ABI to that extent. Uh, implementations of it might have their own ABI, but that's because it might only pertain on, you know, it might only be relevant on that platform. Uh, but the vocabulary should stay generic enough, you know, whether you're dealing with, uh, syscalls or even just like uh, uh, SE Linux policies or libset comp or whatever it is that you know, like apply these things where possible, these things are required, these things are optional, worn, how, how, how do you do that? The vocabulary, the means by which to, to, to do that should stay generic. But uh, as far as it being an ABI, well, that, that gets into being an implementation detail of particular platforms and how they are willing to accommodate those isolators. Um, on the topic of isolators, uh, I think one interesting path we go down is giving applications the ability to describe how constrained of an environment they're able to operate into. Um, a lot of applications today, you, you have to lean on essentially the systemd service files or your RPM or your, your package manager to say, well, I'm a Linux binary, but it's okay if you remove all these capabilities, if you remove all these syscalls from me. Um, so I think that's one opportunity we have, and I think what falls out of that is um, when you're defining and configuring, uh, configuring a runtime like Rocket, you can say things like, uh, by default, I only anything that's downloaded over the internet and ran on my machines, they only get this limited subset of syscalls and, and capabilities. Um, things that come from example.com, however, they, they're given full trust. So if they ask and say, I, I, I need to run with full trust, they're given that capability. So uh, it's kind of, I, I think the interesting spot we get into is, um, using these, this naming, um, this distributed namespace, and then also all these isolation uh, opportunities that we have, and giving system administrators the ability to decide where the trust domains are for the applications running in their environment. Um, I think that's when it gets interesting and more useful. And also be useful to keep the spec from being, becoming too Linux specific. I mean, there's already Jetpack, which is implemented on FreeBSD, and even in a recent discussion over how to do user handling it, had to look up how Windows does usernames because you know there might also be uh, a Windows implementation at some point. So that's that's true. It's great, um, but the let me take the contrarian point of view. The the spec repository has two files of note. One is called spec, and the other is called OS spec. And uh, I really think it is reasonable for OS spec to grow. Now I don't know if you want to call it into an ABI. Maybe you start to border on that. Um, I think there are some baselines that you need to assume, or, or, or the fragmentation makes the whole thing useless. Um, but there were three parts of, of your question that I picked up. There's security isolation, performance, behavioral isolation, um, and, and ABI. So, so there's the ABI part. Um, 
performance isolation, uh, well, that's really hard. Um, and this is something we've been doing for years and years at Google. Um, I can and have spoken at length about isolation. Um, I'm happy to talk to people about it later. We do not have time for it in the margins here. Um, but it's a really hard problem, and it really matters. And you, you know, everybody who's running a container has this problem. They just maybe don't know it yet. Um, and then there's security. Um, and wow, uh, that's a, even a hard one, harder one to touch. Um, it's pretty well understood at this point that containers are not a security boundary, um, and that if you're running antagonistic users against each other in containers, you're going to lose. Um, this is something that needs to evolve, and I think it needs to evolve from the inside out. That means starting with the, the hardware and the kernel, um, figuring out what we can do uh, to strengthen those boundaries without uh, paying the full VM tax, quote unquote. Um, I think this is a big space for innovation in the next year or two. Hey, so, so far with the exception of the isolation bits, you've been talking about kind of how the container is wrapped. Now, I know there's been a, a lot of blog posts written about whether or not you should run a full in it or single process inside of your containers. And given you're talking about isolation and, and interfaces and how these containers should run, I'm wondering if, if you ever will wade into that space in the spec of, you know, we expect containers to run one binary or we expect containers to, you know, behave like a normal Linux image would. Uh, that's a good question. Um, arguably, we do define that in the spec today. It's just very implicit. Um, so as I mentioned, in Rocket, we, uh, we do use systemd for, to spin up all of the pods. Um, and we, we essentially, we, we expect um, applications, uh, we, or we, we implicitly expect that ac uh, applications do just run a single process um, or a couple of simple processes. Um, and then we're providing that init system to, to manage their life cycle. Um, and that's really what the pod abstraction is about. It's about that, that's the level at which you do, you're going to couple um, different applications running together. Um, so, for example, if you have a sidekick process, then you just define two apps in the pod. Um, you don't need to worry. <coughs> excuse me. You don't need to worry about um, creating an init system and sort of setting up all that orchestration. We just uh, provide those abstractions uh, in the spec and in the definition of what a pod looks like, um, and then implementations will take care of the details. Anyone else? Opinionation. Um, I, I think the, uh, the downsides of running a full image in a container so far outweigh the benefits um, that, in my opinion, that conversation's over. <laughs> Great, that's done. <laughs> that's pretty strong, Tim. There's a question back here. Kelsey, this side? There's one over there. You're just sitting on the wrong side. <laughs> we'll, we'll, Hey, uh, what are your thoughts on providing multi-machine pod spec? So right now, pod specifies how multiple applications work in a single machine. Are there any ideas on how to do that for cluster, for example? Do you, do you think about this? Um, this <laughs> does not parse. Um, a pod is... At least, okay, I'm going to take the Kubernetes position largely, I think which influenced the, the EPSI spec a lot. Um, a pod is by definition a single machine thing. Uh, there's no such thing as a multi-machine pod. A multi-machine pod is in Kubernetes what we would call a service uh, or, or something else at a higher level of construction. It is not, I think, a primitive uh, at this level. And going back to Kelsey's earlier question of uh, what would you like to not see in the spec? This. <laughs> I will clap for that one. Okay. We have a question here. Yeah. Um, I have a question about stateful containers. Um, basically, what are your guys' opinions on, on the idea of storing state in a container? I mean, do you believe that basically they should just always be ephemeral and never store state, or do you think there's any potential there? And what do you think? Yeah. I, I think um, I, most sysadmins that you talk to, uh, they have an idea of where they want data to go, um, whether that's their special slash data directory or slash opt or slash serve. Um, and then they have an idea of where those things get backed up to. Um, and I'd really, I'd like to push on this as hard as possible um, that we, uh, inside of Rocket, not necessarily inside of the spec, but pushing on this idea that 
the containers should define where are the paths, name the paths that you want to have backed up, name the places that uh, you expect configuration written to, and let's, let's make that the abstraction. Um, and it gives a lot of nice properties. It means that we can, um, we can essentially assume that when we extract that app container image on disk, that that entire tree is read-only. And there's these special places that um, files go, whether they're database files or wall files or log files. Um, and then we, we pull those out of the container um, during lifecycle events like death of the process, et cetera. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see how far we can go by making the, con the container image itself completely read-only. Um, but I can see the use case of packaging something up. Um, I don't know if it's entirely necessary in the spec. So ideally, everything is stateless, right? Um, but there has to be a turtle at the bottom um, that holds all the state, right? And this is something that we've sort of come to grips with in Kubernetes land, too. Um, so the way I like to think of it uh, is not about stateful containers. It's about lifetimes. It's about what is the lifetime you want for your data and what is the lifetime you get for your containers and your pods. Um, and if you couple those things together, then, then you get whatever the coupling is, right? And you have to make your decision based on that. Um, and if you can decouple them, then you can make different decisions. Um, I think there's a lot of power in that decoupling, um, which is sort of the approach that we've taken in Kubernetes space. Um, the app C spec is very clear that all runs of a container start with a fresh image, right? Um, which does mean that if you write data to your local disk, it is by definition, uh, ephemeral data. Um, this aligns well with what we do inside Google. Um, you know, if you need data and you need it to survive, you'd better put it someplace safe, right? And your local disk is not safe. So I think we have time for one more question. Uh, we'll do it here. Hi. Um, John mentioned this briefly, um, talking about a, a discovery service for app container images. Um, it seems to me that like a big uh, blocker for adoption, adoption of uh, a rocket, at least specifically, is um, now you've got this great format, but where do you find images? I don't want to be going to random web pages and looking at metadata to find out where the files are hosted. Um, so I'm curious if there's been either work already on some sort of registry-like service or index-like service that allows you to find where on the, on the web these images exist, um, and also how that might play into the app container spec at large. Are, is the spec responsible, should it be responsible for specifying a, a, um, an easy discovery service for implementations of the spec? Do you think Google could add an app C tab? <laughs> I'll get right on it. <laughs> yeah. um, so in the spec today, there uh, are some to-dos, um, one of which is adding an uh, index. Um, we're looking at using uh, a specification called the update framework, which is um, from Python. I'm getting thumbs up from the question. Uh, so uh, the, the update framework defines essentially how to index binary blobs on the internet that are also signed. And so I'd like to use this as essentially the, the indexing format. Um, then you could imagine federating this somehow. Um, so. Uh, GoDoc would be one example of this. So if you've ever used Go, there's a site called GoDoc.org GoDoc um, where they essentially crawl um, all the, the various Go packages. Um, and so you could implement it that, this way as a, a crawling service. Um, there'd be other ways of perhaps uh, orchestrating um, the, the run times to say, hey, I'm running this container. And essentially like the, the pop, uh, what was it called? Debian had this like popularity contest package. Yeah, PopCon. Yeah, popcorn. Um, essentially to figure out and index where all the various containers are over the internet and provide that as a service. Or, or, or Google could just do it. <laughs> cool. So I guess that's it. Let's give a big round of applause to our panelists.